Listen for the gospel of our Lord found in the 20th chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went on out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for their usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. And when he went out at about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he did the same. And he, and he found others standing around and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, because no one has hired us. And he said to them, you also go to the vineyard when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought that they also received more. But each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, The last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But the master replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to the last the same as I have given to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. Let us pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. I want to first go back to the uh, Exodus passage. Manna, or man who, what is it? is one of the great miracles of the Old Testament. For from this miraculous food from heaven, the children of Israel ate 40 uh, years in the desert. It sustained them. And after the manna was gone and the 40 years were over, they remembered this gift as a great gift of God that allowed them to make that great journey from slavery to the promised land. But the part I want you to remember about that is not that the manna was heavenly food, which it was, not that it was a great miracle, which it was, but the miracle was given in the midst of grumbling and complaint, or another way to say this. The miracle was given to the children of Israel not when they were being good little boys and girls, not when they were perfect people of God, but in the midst of their anxiety and struggle, God does not punish them, but blesses them with food. 
Now to the New Testament passage, the gospel. Uh, there was a few years ago I did an intergenerational class, and what we did in that class is we read the parables of Jesus, we talked about them for a couple weeks, and then the last week, or the third week, we had to color or draw something we gained from that parable. And each member of the class drew very different things, sensing the difference in that story. One of our members who was a big union person wrote, had a picture of people protesting the masters giving equal wages for equal work and other sayings like that. Another one took, again, another one took the master's side because they were in management and said, it is right for me to be generous with my gifts and I'm trying to treat people not necessarily fairly, but graciously. The youngest member of the class, who was about six in my memory, his picture was a picture of a family at a table praying that their father would get work so that they could have food. For I explained as we talked about this parable that the workers in the vineyard were not their parents who went to their stable jobs and had salaries and benefits. But the workers, and this was in New York City, were those down at Richmond Avenue who waited for someone to give them work for the day so they could have food to eat. And for that little boy, the issue was not how much the worker was being paid. The issue was that each job meant that they would have food for that day. Or another way to say it, when he shared that picture and explained what the parable meant to him, the adults in the room went, oh. For they were working upon their rights, their needs, their privilege, and the little boy in the room was working on how does one survive in this crazy world? Well, again, the, and literally, the youngest was first and the oldest were last in this story. Anyway, who is most valued in the kingdom of heaven or who is most valued at the Church of the Covenant, we normally put the value on the longest standing members of the community. But in this parable, the value is of the newest in the community. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. Scary words for those who value their place in a community. So, families understand this. When a family has a birth in the family, the most valuable member is the newest member of the family. And everything stops to take care of that baby, to make sure they have all the stuff they need, whether you are the grandparent or the parent or the sibling. And I've known some siblings that want their newest member of the family to go home and not quite sure that they belong in this family. But ultimately, in families, the one who has the greatest need gets the most attention. Now again, if we worry about our pecking order and our place in the kingdom or in the church, uh, there's always worry about that. 
But uh, again, I'm from Louisiana, and I'll again sing one more song. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when those saints go marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be in their number when the saints go marching in. I don't care if I'm in the head of the line or the last one in the line, as long as I'm in the group. That's all that matters. So, I don't care if I'm first or last. Just keep me in the group. Amen. <laughs>